Hello, Silver Grayscale here, getting back to more Final Fantasy. There are no treasure chests here. From what I can see, it's just a maze of doors. And all the enemies down here are water elemental. Or water affiliated at least. So yeah, we have the Kraken down here somewhere. Yeah, that leads to like just a dead end. And I'm completely fine with just auto attacking and having uh the Black Wizard have Thundag at the ready. But I think for this we're gonna go Thor's Hammer and Thundaga. Alright. Dealt with that pretty good. And either side here is completely fine. Oh, preemptive strike! Don't mind if I freaking do! That was a nice optimized turn. And yeah, we found the orb of the Kraken. Now we just have to get there. Okay, you're just handing all of these out now. And we can't read the gravestones, sadly. Alright. Entire party got to level up. Nothing there. Nice. And there he is, so let us fully prepare. All right. The Kraken! So, usual setup as always. Knight attacks, ninja casts haste on the knight, white wizard casts Protera on the party, and black wizard casts Thundaga on the boss. Second round, the knight attacks with his hasted up uh, double attacks. Ninja ha uh, hastes himself. White wizard casts uh, Invisura on the party. And black wizard, Thundog on the boss. Aha, because ink costs blindness and everyone is at least protected against the uh, status afflictions. There's nothing that this guy can do to us. Uh, you can go with a... I think the highest cure spell I have is a Cura. Yeah, you can cast Cura on Sephir. And you go for a Thundaga. Might be the final round for the boss, honestly. Okay. 
Hilaga. Thundaga. Alright, Kraken is down. Third elemental down, only one more stands between us and the mastermind of this entire thing. Tiamat. And I think the last item spot in the game is down here, which is where uh, Masamune was. Because now I'm starting to freaking remember! Uh, watch the game just laugh at me and put something else there, just to spite me. And all the enemies here are the enemies that we met in the Flying Fortress. Which we recently did, and I recently did in uh, this recording session, so they're fresh in our memory. Just not gonna waste any uh, spell slots on these things. Save him for the boss. Four vampires and a vampire lord. Okay, it's a bit sucky that uh, the knights are paralyzed, but... Uh, hopefully they got this. Oh, he actually got up there. Nice. And continue the auto battle in that case. Because if he didn't, I would have just uh, quit the auto battle and just had uh, the White Whisper cast uh, a Dia spell. But yeah, Masamune. It is very powerful for the knight as well. Because, sure, it's stronger than Excalibur. Only problem is. No one else can use Excalibur. And I feel like the Masamune, a legendary katana, works better in the hands of a ninja. Let's see it in action, shall we? That's very, very nice damage. And technically, while the knight can use the Masamune, and it is powerful, and apparently... Apparently, that was every treasure chest in the game. Huh, must have forgotten one of my first playthrough. Sadly, we can't get a full bestiary because it involves meeting the uh, war mech and he is so goddamn rare that you need to go back and forth in the final area of the uh, Flying Fortress. And uh, by the time you reach him, either you're going to be at like max level, which is going to trivialize everything, or... You can run into him and he can just decide to uh, say, uh, screw your hit points, you're dead now. <laughs> but yeah, love, if you're watching, uh, I gave the Masamune to you. Am I forgiven for my blunder of not using a katana in Symphony of the Night? All right, let us prep our HP, and let's vanquish the final fiend again. Tiamat, we've done this dance before.
And I would like to make an addendum to uh, round three and onwards. If the party isn't low on health, cast holy. If the party is low on health, cast your highest heal spell. But if their health is looking like this, it's completely fine. Alright, Ice Storm. Yeah, we're still looking good. Alright, she is still standing. Which is fitting for Tiamat, because... Uh, oh boy, she... I'm not kidding when I'm saying that she's one of the toughest fiends that a uh, dungeon master can send at you in D&D. I should know. I have sent her once, though pretty nerfed, to a uh, large party of like level 20 PCs. Because I have a feeling that most people who run Tiamat as an encounter... Uh, they have, like, a lot of shit that the, um, PCs can use, you know, to their advantage. But who knows, I'm honestly playing this again and, like, fighting Tiamat again. I'm itching to, like, use Tiamat in a, uh, in a campaign again, so we'll see how that goes. Thing is, I'm making a more or less full move, DMing wise, over to uh, Pathfinder. But yeah, there are no treasure chests here, no secrets. And our final fiend, the one who orchestrated all this. The mastermind behind all this. The root of all evil. Life behind the door. That we're standing right outside of. We are as prepared as we're ever going to be. We're ending this with max skill. 10 hours into the game. At level 51. I'm going to make a quick save just in case. And let's go. Do you remember me? I was once the most renowned knight of Cornelia. It's Garland. 2,000 years from now, you killed me. I am Garland. Oh, you did defeat me then. But the four great forces saved me by sending me back through time. Once here, I sent the four fiends into the future. Where they shall once again use the four great forces to send me into the past. In 2,000 years... I, remem I will remember none of this. But I will be reborn again here. So even as you die and die again, I shall return. Born again into this endless cycle that I have created.